All right, so I'm scrolling through the videos this morning, and I see a title, 1946, The Stupidest Movie Ever Made. Now, I, thought, I was thinking this was an old movie from, like, the 80s or something, and maybe the 70s, but no, this is a, a new movie, a recent movie, either just come out or it's coming out, I'm not sure. But you, you go to 1946themovie.com, and here, let me read through this. What if the word homosexual was never meant to be in the Bible? Question mark. That's a great question, isn't it? What if the word homosexual was never meant to be in the Bible? So let's go and take a look at the word homosexual. Oh, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> what if the word supercalifragilisticexpedaliosis was never meant to be in the Bible? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, but the word's not in the Bible. Whatever. Let's keep reading. 1946 is a documentary film that chronicles how the misuse of a single word changed the course of modern history. Alright, so I guess we're going to ignore the fact that that word is not in the Bible, I guess. What if the word homosexual was never meant to be in the Bible? 1946, the mistranslation that shifted a culture. Now here we got a trailer. Let's watch a couple seconds. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate nor homosexuals shall inherit the kingdom of God. Ooh, oh, buddy. Ooh, is that John MacArthur? Um, let's do this. Effeminate. I think that's from... No, or yeah, what? right there it is, I think. I think it's from this one right here. All right, yeah. Nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. All right, so I think <clears throat> that's what he was quoting. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I'm not real sure here. But let's do it this way. Right there it is. All right, and so... Um... I mean, it's in all these other perversions. All right, homosexuals, sexual perverts, and so on and so forth. But in the King James Bible, um, it's effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind, and, um, and all these people. None of them are going to inherit the kingdom of God at and such were some of you all right so uh, the scripture has concluded a, us all under sin all right so let's read a little more here 1946 the mistranslation that shifted culture is a feature documentary that follows the story of tireless researchers these guys just researched the crap out of this word homosexual they explored it up and down and sideways and all around. You could say they were obsessed with homosexuality and they just researched the crap out of it. Who traced the origins of the anti-gay movement <clears throat> among Christians to a grave mistranslation of the Bible in 1946. Wow. It chronicles the discovery of never-before-seen archives at Yale University, which unveil astonishing new revelations and cast significant doubt on any biblical basis for prejudice, featuring commentary from prominent scholars as well as opposing pastures, including the personal stories of the film's creators. 1946 is at once challenging, enlightening, and inspiring. 
While other documentaries have been successful in their attempt to treat the symptom of homophobia in the church, 1946 is working to diagnose and treat the disease. Biblical literalism. The disease is biblical literal literalism. Literalism. That's the disease. The disease is if you believe the Bible. That's the disease. And God forbid you should think the Bible is from God like I do. That's the disease. All right. It's not a man putting his penis into another man's anus. That's not the disease. The disease is believing the Bible you hold in your hands is from God. All right. So let's, um, you know, these guys, they, they study you know just tirelessly you know looking at this word homosexual just tirelessly tireless researchers just studying exploring homosexuality up down sideways and all around so let's do the same except let's look at look at it from the other point of view and Let's see what the Bible says. And let's pretend like it's from God. Because it is. Leviticus 18 verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Now, how do you twist that around to say that, well, that's not really talking about homosexuality. Um, well, that's kind of tough one, isn't it? So you either believe the Bible you hold in your hands or you don't. Alright, so we go through uh, these different uh, perversions here. Is there anybody that can twist this around? I think somebody can. But maybe they don't in this particular verse because it's Old Testament. They figure, well, the Old Testament, we can just pass that off as nothing. And that's what people do. But um, we're going to look at what the New Testament says as well. Of course, well, that's brilliant right there. Thou shalt not lie with Zachar. Who's Zachar? As with Isha. Uh, who's Isha? It is Tehovah Yah Yah. I don't even know what none of that means. Thou shalt not be meddled or mingled with a man by lechery of a woman. What does that mean? Thou shalt not be mixed together with man, like in fleshly coupling with a woman, for it is abomination. Okay, whatever. So we're going to go. Um, I mean, it's pretty clear, right? That's, that's calling homosexuality an abomination. Of course, you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and how they wanted to have sex with men they were unaware that they were angels. They were wanting to have sex with these men because they were new men they'd never seen before. And Lot tried to offer his daughters, which were virgins instead. But um, it was ultimately God destroyed both Sodom and Gomorrah. And um, it clearly it was because they were all homosexual, sexual perverts. And let's do this right here. Uh, Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. That still applies today. Okay. 
now we go to Romans 1 and let's take a look at a couple verses here um, all right wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature what do you imagine it's talking about? And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir, which was meat. <clears throat> Even and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. All right. And being filled with all kinds of wickedness, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Right, so it's not just about people that are committing these acts of homosexuality, but they're taking pleasure in encouraging them that do such things. That all of that is wickedness, all of it. And so these guys here are these the guys that. I don't know who those guys are. Maybe that's from 1946. And um, so, the really, is there anything more that we need to go over here? This is utterly ridiculous here. Um, I don't think I'll even want to know more anymore. I really don't. Um, I think I've seen enough. And really, it it comes down to, do you believe the Bible you hold in your hands according to these people that's the disease biblical literalism that's the disease alright this, this is not the disease this is the disease according to them believing the Bible is actually true that's the disease so just let me know if you agree with that and uh, if you do agree with that then uh, <laughs> uh, you're in big trouble you're in big big trouble guarantee it all right so the most ridiculous thing now you know you, you see this this thing will get just all kinds of rave reviews and people will talk about this like it's the most wonderful thing since sliced pie. But it's as wicked as anything you'll ever see in your entire life. Not only condoning homosexuality, which is a sin, make no mistake about it, it's absolutely a sin. Whether you like it or not, God did not make us to have homosexual relations. And when the time comes, when we are resurrected into our heavenly bodies, if you will, our glorified bodies, upon the resurrection, when we are changed from corruptible to incorruptible, when we are incorruptible, we're not going to be having gay sex. Guarantee it. All right. We're not going to be having sex, period. And there's more to life than sex, 
right and I pointed this out uh, several times here let's go let's do it this way Second Peter 3, I think I pointed this out yesterday, knowing this first, that there should come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust, right? And there should be mockers here in Jude 1, verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, mockers and scoffers in the last days, walking after their own ungodly lust you see how much how over sexualized everybody is thinking hey let's have sex with everything and everybody and whatever dogs cats people of the same sex and all that sort of stuff I mean sex 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 right just like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah really well anyways that's enough uh, if you think I'm wrong and uh, you think I'm the disease, let me know. I just want to know if you think I'm the disease and I guess gay sex is the cure. I'm not sure. Just let me know if you agree with these guys.